Alright, this is a TH400. I figured I'd make a video to explain uh, yoke selection and what uh, we do and what and a lot of other people that build aftermarket TH400s do. What they do is they machine this off right here. Um, really, really early ones. I want to say like I had a 66 model core one time. It didn't have the O-ring lip right here, but pretty much all of them I've ever seen, they have an O-ring lip right here where um, the bolt-in yoke on a two-wheel drive goes and it seals on because if you don't have a solid yoke and you don't have an o-ring there it will just leak out right here um, so what we do is we machine this off and the same holds true for a 4L80E a lot of them have that lip there too some of them are full splined all the way up here um, if you do not machine this lip off what you need this one it's slightly counterboard but it's like for a transfer case I'm pretty sure um, but if you don't machine that lip off, what you have to do is you have to buy a yoke that has this, the splines, they're not full spline to the end. They have it counterboard somewhat because what happens is if it's not machined there and you still have the O-ring lip, what will happen is this will come in and it'll just hit right there and it won't go any further. So what we do is we machine that land off and then you can you know pull, push the yoke in all the way. It's bound up on the splines right there internally. Um, so you'll put it in, put it in all the way. Oh, that's what she said. And then, <laughs> and then pull it out some. Oh, that's what she said. And then uh, measure your drive shaft. And what I always suggest people do is they, you know, the car's not there, but load the rear suspension all the way, and then measure from the middle of the U joint to the middle of the other U joint back there. And you know, do it, do them all. Like get them both parallel to the ground like that or you know as long as they're the same don't measure you know don't put that up there and then measure and have the pinion flange like that you're gonna get some goofy ass freaking measurements you're gonna get your drive shaft and be like oh my god it's bottoming out because you're a moron and didn't didn't pair up the u-joints um and measure that away um but yeah unload it and measure and then load it and measure it because sometimes the geometry I know on my Crown Vic when the suspension is all the way unloaded so like the jack stands are sitting on the frame and the tires are all the way extended it will push it further in so then when I hit a bump it pulls it out some some cars the geometry is different so measure both because you don't want to have too long of a drive shaft because that will just jam everything forward and you know, knock the case lugs off or wipe out every thrust bearing in the back half of the transmission. I think on power glides, I, I don't mess with them. I've never built one in my life, but I think on power glides you can actually wipe the engine thrust bearing. Um, it's just another way transmission guys will get blamed for, oh, I wiped out my thrust bearing. No, there's a ton of other reasons why you can wipe out your thrust bearing in your engine. That's a totally different subject. But yeah, that's what we do on 400s. We'll machine that lip off. ADEs will machine the lip off. Uh, if you do, check, make sure. See, this is a solid one. Um, what you can do is you can blow into there. Probably, probably not during November for all you no-shave November people. Oh, I brought my beard out. But you, you gotta blow into there and see if you can hear any hissing. Um, because what happens is sometimes people, they'll, you know, I'll machine that off every single one. Some people will just grab any random yoke that might have a pinhole in there, jam it in there, and then they'll say, oh, your transmission leaks. It's like, no, it's your yoke. Um, another thing you can do, I've seen it happen a time or two before, sometimes these yokes, they have, well, they, unless they're like a solid Sonics one that has like a snap ring in there, if you push it in too far, what happens is this will smack internally onto that and it'll push it out some. So you'll take a yoke that wouldn't have leaked and now it will begin to leak. So, but yeah, I just figured I'd make a little Rambletron video explaining um, some terms that people, they'll, they'll Google or I'll see questions on Sloppy sometimes. People will be like, hey, what, what, uh, what yoke do I need, yada, yada, yada. So that's a quick rundown of what type of uh, interchange and what type of things to look for yoke selection, drive shaft measuring, all that stuff. So, bye.